Deborah, Deborah Booker Designs, and uh, we're going live today. We're doing it on Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Give me just a minute to get you guys brought up on my iPad. Okay, I see a couple of people on here. If you're just joining us, give me a couple of minutes to um, let a few more people get on. And let me turn down the volume on this one. Okay. So if you're, oh, boy, you guys are coming on fast. Hi, Elaine. Thanks for joining. Hi, Pamela. Boy, you've been on my mind a lot, Pamela. We need to get caught up. Hi, Donna. Okay, if you guys are just coming on and joining, say hello and let me know uh, where you're from. So let me start over again. I'm Deborah Booker with Deborah Booker Designs and I'm here in Arizona, it's super hot. Uh, I have a shop at the Brass Armadillo in Phoenix and then I have an online store. And on the Facebook page, all of that information is straight up on Instagram, I'll have to go in there and put it on. I had it on and accidentally hit the wrong button just before we went live. Um, hi, Sherry. We shouldn't be on more than an hour, I don't think. Hi, Mary. Hi, Donna. So, uh, gosh, we got a couple of Donnas on here today. So, you guys, what we're going to do today is I'm going to put the camera down so you can see. Okay, I think I have both cameras in focus here. Let's see what I'm seeing. Okay, so what we're doing today is, I'm, I've wanted to do this for a long time. I have this drop leaf table that my um, niece gave me. It was in her uh, grandmother's side of the family and she has lots of fond memories of this table. It's a, and I love drop leaf tables. I mean, every time I see one, I have to grab it because I, I love them. And I knew right away when she gave me this table what I was going to do with it. So between yesterday, um, I sanded it really well. I didn't sand it down to the wood, but it had a varnish finish on it. I sanded that varnish finish off you wouldn't normally have to do that. Normally you could just use slick stick, but I had a new sander and I wanted to try it out. So that's what I did. And um, then I cleaned it really well with white lightning because you know, it was, a, it was a table that was used and sat at every single day. And even though we think we wipe them clean, they really aren't. So I washed it well with white lightning and rinsed it well with fresh clean water and I knew for since the Dixie Bell silk paint came out that I that's what I was going to use on this table. And you know, it's a wonderful thing because I have three coats on here. It took when you're using the white, it does take three coats to usually cover. Um, and when it covers, it covers really well because that's what I've used on my kitchen cabinets and they started out black. And I thought it would only take two coats on here, but it really did take three coats. Um, I've been told that this does, the white color does take three coats, but most of the other colors just take two. And when you put um, the silk paint on, it's important to let it dry really well. It doesn't dry like chalk paint does. It dries from the outside to the inside. And so it may feel like it's dry on the outside, but that paint hasn't dried on the inside. So I put a coat on last night and let it dry all night long. And then early this morning, I put another coat on and looked at it and went, mm, it needs a third coat. So a third coat went on about, I think about noonish. So it's had four hours and it doesn't feel cold to the touch, but 
under normal circumstances, I would tell you guys to let, especially if you've got three coats on, to let it dry overnight. But because um, this is a um, live video, I'm just pushing the envelope. So Elaine, no, I just explained that this is uh, Dixie Belle Silk Paint and the color is Salt Water. So the color is Salt Water in the Silk line and that would be the same equivalent as cotton. It's the whitest white in the silk and cotton is the whitest white in the chalk paint. But you know, every time I use the silk, I try to explain to you guys that the rules for using silk are completely different than using chalk paint. Um, so if you have any questions about how to properly use silk paint, let me know because it's a wonderful paint. It has um, a primer in it, so I didn't have to prime this table. It has the color in it, and it has the top coat in it, all of that is in one jar. So because I have three coats of silk paint on here, I have the equivalent of three coats of boss, three coats of cotton, and three coats of a top coat, like a satin, it's not a gator hide. So, um, but all I had to do was paint one coat on three times. Otherwise, if I had done all of those, it would have been three coats of boss, that I had to put on three coats of, of cotton and then another three coats of satin top coat. That would have been nine coats of paint and I did it in three. So that's, that's the beauty about using the silk paints. And so this is a really cool design um, from Prima and um, it's called Farm Delights. I have a few of them left, I don't have a lot. Um, and it's a pretty big design. So if you can see on here, it's two pages, but the cow is split right in half. And so this is a good example of how to learn how to put these big transfers on and especially to match them up when they're cut in half. So that's what we're gonna work on today. So let's get started. <coughs> Donna says she can't stay more than an hour, so we got to get the show on the road. I measured my table, and my table is um, 38 inches wide, so the center is right here, and that's at 19. And I'm going to lay this out so you guys can see what it looks like. So this is the top half. I'm gonna set it down because I can see my paper is rolling on itself on the other one. I don't want that to happen. Okay, so wants to continue to do that. going to lift this table up and turn it around. Also, you guys, I didn't mention, it comes with two chairs, really cute chairs, and I'm going to paint those chairs black, and the legs on the table I'm going to paint black, and then there's an apron that goes around underneath it where the legs are, and I'm going to paint the apron part white. And then this transfer is all black and white. So I think it's gonna look really cute. Now, I want you to see, make sure you're all in the camera, that every transfer comes with a protective sheet and the top sheet is your actual transfer. 
the back of your transfer has adhesive on it. So that's why you need this protective sheet. And this one keeps trying to unroll, and I don't want it to because if it does that, it's going to stick, and I could lose part of that transfer. It's being persnickety, but it's something you need to be aware of. And I'm not putting all of this writing and numbers on here. I only want the part that has the wreath going around, the cow, and the lettering down here, and of course the rooster sitting on the back of the cow. So let me get my painter's tape. I always think I have everything. Okay, so any questions so far, you guys? How many of you have done a big transfer? First of all, how many of you have done transfers and how many of you have done big transfers like this? The big ones can be a little bit intimidating, so that's why I thought this would be a good demo. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting around what I don't want to have transferred over. And I could have done this beforehand, but I really wanted you guys to see the whole transfer and to know that almost every transfer I've used, I've cut, the, cut it up. And You know, then you can just use these leftover pieces with other projects. You get a lot of bang for your buck when you do that. So I don't want this to get all messed up, so I'm just going to tape it off. I'm just going to tape it off with some um, painter's tape so it won't stick on it. That way I can roll it up and put it back in my tube. Well, I'm glad, Sherry, that you've used the transfers. And um, I'm glad that I can show you how to do it and not ruin your transfer and not um, make yourself crazy. So I'm going to snip in here because I only want this part going across the top. See this writing right here is going to be awesome. I love the writing and like on that bird transfer that you guys have seen me use on a couple of projects, I've almost used up all the bird writing that came with that one and so having another transfer that has um, script in it is a bonus. They are, Sherry. They um, can make a purse, a, a piece that is nice and turn it into a piece that's fantastic. And if you aren't a furniture artist, people don't know it's a transfer. Now, another thing I wanna to mention to you is like I said, this silk paint already has a top coat built into it. Now, if you're putting transfers on chalk paint, you just go ahead and put it directly on the chalk paint. You don't have to put a top coat in first. I almost cut that part of the wreath off, so I need to get around to it this way.
Now, because this already has a top coat, I'm just gonna apply it directly on here. But because it's a table and somebody's gonna be sitting here eating and drinking at it, I need to be sure it's really well protected. And so I will be putting gator hide on it. But what you guys need to know is transfers and gator hide do not play well together. Um, and so in order for me to get gator hide on here, after I get the transfer on, I'm going to have to go and put a coat of satin on it to put a protective barrier between the gator hide and the transfer. And I'm not worried about doing that. I mean, I've done it lots of times, but the point of doing that is to get a barrier on there so the gator hide doesn't destroy your, your peaks. Now, let me get a show up a close up here. So down here at the bottom where my finger is down here, you can see a line going across uh, where the where the bottom of the, the middle of the cow is and I need to join that up with the other half of the transfer so I also need to trim this off as neatly as I can going all the way across so hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here I'm just trimming that bottom piece off. And I'm trying to be as perfect with it as I can be so that they match up perfectly. And a lot of the transfers from Prima are done like this. I've noticed so far with the transfers from Dixie Bell they don't have them matching up. I don't know if they will continue. It may just depend on what kind of de designs they're doing. So you guys are being really quiet. It always makes me nervous when you guys are so quiet. Can you guys believe it's August? In Arizona, that means we only have two more months of summer. <laughs> okay, so let me just hold this up again so you guys can see it. I trimmed all of that border that was on the bottom. It's all trimmed off. Okay, so this half is ready to go. That I've cut off I'm just gonna roll I've taped them I'm just gonna roll them and put them back in my tube and every tube comes with a transfer stick and they also sell a transfer tool and I like using both so it's just a matter of your preference Sometimes the stick is good because it gets in smaller places, but the tool has two ends to it, so it does a good job as well. Elaine, uh, no, that's exactly the wrong thing to do. On your transfers on chalk paint, you can put your transfer on right away. On the chalk paint, you don't have to put a top coat on. They adhere really nice to chalk paint. Um, the, the deal with the Gator High 
is gator hide and transfers do not play well together. So you need to put a barrier down um, between your transfer and gator hide. So the step would be paint your table, put your transfer on, put a top coat on. It doesn't matter what top coat. It can be flat, it can be gloss, it can be um, satin, it doesn't matter. Use what you have and put a barrier down with that top coat. And then after that, you can put your gator hide on. Does that make sense, Elaine? And you, you know, when you're doing your transfers, if it's not a piece that's going to have um, a lot of wear and tear on it, a table is going to have the most wear and tear of any anything we could probably be doing. So that's why when I get my gator hide on here, it will have at least four coats or more of gator hide on it, just so that it's been well protected. I'm probably going to keep this piece for myself. I know I'll keep it as long, at least as long as um, I'd like to take it to a Penner's conference. And I may put it in the booth just as a display piece for a while because I think it's super cute and I've I don't have anything farmhouse in my house, but I really like doing farmhouse projects. I did some custom stencils for a friend of mine um, a few weeks ago, and that was all Navajo design work. And ever since I did that, I've been, I've had it in my head that I wanna do some Navajo. <laughs> and so I was sitting in here the other night looking at my family room in here, which is a mess because it's got like six, seven pieces of furniture in various stages of being done. Um, but I was thinking with the rock wall and fireplace and stuff, I could easily turn this room into, yes. and I was I was watching Yellowstone last night too, and I was thinking I could easily turn this room into a really pretty like Indian Western kind of room because I have a, a dark brown leather sofa and might be time for a change. I told you to stand in that top in six minutes. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, my brother found me a new sander that we're testing out. Because I, I told him I wanted a surf prep. And if any of you guys have a surf prep, let me know, because I'd really be interested in your feedback. Hi, Susie. Thanks for joining me. And um, the surf prep sanders, are they start at 500 And then, of course, you have to buy all of their sanders and, and um, sanding pads and all of that. And that's a big investment. And I know a lot of the furniture gals do have them and they swear by them. But my brother is one of these people that always wants to know if there's a, another way to go. And so he figured out how we could make our own surf prep and make our own surf prep pads. And so that's what he did, and I tested it out on this table, and it was awesome for a heck of a lot less money. Yeah, that's what they start at, Susie. That's 
the lowest end model. Okay, so now we have the cow bottom. I'm gonna give it one little piece of tape just to keep it all together. Okay, so we have one cow bottom and one cow top and I'm gonna get all the rest of this stuff out of our way. Um, Susie, nobody's going to have a surf prep on Craigslist. They are highly sought after in the furniture world. Nobody's going to have one on there. You can find other sanders on there, but the surf prep is a special it's a special sander because you can sand over areas of, with detail in the furniture and the sander will still get down into the details without scalping the top of the furniture, if that makes sense. So like when you have scallops and rolls or edges on borders and edges on tables and stuff like that, because of the way the pads are, it will let you go over that whole area without sanding down all of the area that's on the top of it. So far, ours is working good. Yeah, ours worked really good yesterday. We're gonna t continue to do some testing on it. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I marked the Approximate middle of my table is right here. This is the center right here. And so I need to just, I'm going to just eyeball it. that I'm lining up my two pieces. And I'm gonna stand back and take a look at it. I'm seeing exactly what you guys are seeing. So if you see something that needs to be brought to my attention, let me know. It looks to me like I need to shift it over to this side. I have one there, and there. Okay, so this is 19. Here's 19. That's right at the top of this spot. And then if we go this way, just shift it. Okay, you guys, do some math for me. 38 divided in half, is that 19? That would be 15, 16, 17. Come on, you guys, give me some help here. 
because when I do Well, the pattern is smaller than the drop table. Okay, so you guys, when you're doing these big ones, it always is worth it to take your time. And make sure you get it right because once you start putting it on, you're committed. Nineteen. Okay. When I was looking at it before the video started, it was like I've measured this table and it's 38 by 38. But when I take the tape measure and measure the, the sides, it was always marking in a different spot. So that's why I'm second guessing myself here. Is that on high? Okay, and I'm going to walk around this way and take a look at it. I'm looking to see if it looks like it's centered because the ear goes further over here. yardstick to it. Hmm? Okay, so from the ear to there is eight and a half. And from the furthest point over here is eight and a half, people. It's perfect. Hallelujah. Okay. So I'm going to start with the piece on the top. Goldie, you said it's 19.5. That's why I kept going off. I used my calculator just to be sure. And I just thought something's wrong here. And I measured that thing about five times and I'm not kidding. Okay, so. Is the camera close enough for you guys to see what I'm doing here? I'm lifting up. I'm going to start up here at the top. And I'm peeling off the back that's the protector sheet. I'm leaving this sheet exactly where it is so I know exactly how to place this piece. And there's adhesive on the back of it. And so I don't want to lay it down until I have it perfectly aligned. Okay. And now I can smooth it all out. And now I'm gonna start taking my stick here. Let me see if I have my other one just handy so I can show you both of them. No, I don't. I don't know where the other one is. So what I like to do is, and I have to be careful on this edge right here because I've cut it right to the edge and I don't want to scrape off paint, especially since this hasn't, you know, had 
it's had its full four hours of drying time, but I don't wanna scratch my table, so. And what I like to do is just rub over the whole thing, get it down. And then I'm gonna go back and start rubbing and lifting up the sheet that has the design on it, the transfer. And they call them transfers because that's what we're doing. We're transferring a design. And because this has been rolled up for a long time, I wanna be sure that it all goes down exactly where I want it and I don't end up with a big bubble in it. And also on the Prima, the way these are manufactured is they design it. And then they have a machine that has an outline of the design and the machine lays down an exact patch of adhesive that's just slightly bigger than the design and, and that adhesive is all over the whole design and then slightly bigger. And it's referred to as a halo. Now, one of the things I love about all the new Dixie Belle transfers is that their halo is almost non-existent. And when they're doing these, they print the paint onto that glue and then you end up with a little bit of a halo on it. And so, you know, I've been working mostly with the Dixie Bell transfers and um, there's no, barely any halo and I'm seeing halo on this one. It's not a bad one. They, they have improved on them. And I should mention to you guys, I'm glad I just remembered this, um, I have a really big sale going on, and if you didn't see it posted on my website, I would encourage you to go look because it's a really good savings. Um, Prima just released new transfers, and some of the transfers I'm excited about are really cool designs, but they're smaller transfers and nice for art or for craft projects, not just furniture. And they're less expensive because they're smaller. And the designs are really, really cool, you guys. And then they also have new molds that, that are companions to the new designs that they released. And then, um, then some of the favorites are in there. So I have a big sale. And if you go to my website and you uh, click on Prima pre-order sale, all of the items that are on sale are in that one category. You don't have to search all over the website for them. And the sale is over on August 5th. So today's the third, so there's two more days left of the sale. And there's a coupon on there, and it the coupon is HAPPY HOUR, all caps. And that will give you 10% off of anything you order in that group. You can order other things, you know, if you need paint or if you need top coat or whatever, you can order other things. Um, you just won't get the 10% on anything else. It's only on the Prima pre-order items that's a 10%. And the code again, there's a post at the top of my Facebook page, but the code again is happy hour, because that's what this is, you guys. It's a happy hour. Stacy Davis wants to know, is this your table? Just tell her we snuck over the fence and took the neighbors. <laughs> um, yes, this is, this is a table that was in my niece's side of the family. It was her um, grandma and grandpa's. and. Um, no, this table was from Vietnam. It had oh, a, sorry. it had a, it's a really, really well built table and it's got two chairs and then um, they had an extra set of two chairs to go with it. And 
my niece, you know, knows what I do, and so she asked me if I'd like this table, and I love drop leaf tables. I've done a bunch of them, and I still have a bunch. So what I'm doing here is I'm rubbing down, and then I'm lifting up this, ad this adhesive piece. And if you lift it up, like, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but some of the design lifted up with it. So you just lay it back down and it'll put it right exactly where it lifted from and just put it back down and rub it back on. That was a good example because it happens all the time. And that's why you go slow doing this because you do a section and you lift to make sure that you've gotten it all down. Stacy Davis wants to know what your website is again. The website is if on if you're on the Facebook page, it's at the top of this page. Uh, my Facebook, Instagram, website, YouTube, all of that is up there at the top. But it's Debra, it's www.debra D E B O R A H Booker B U C H E R designs.com. And like I said, you get 10% off of any of the Prima products in that category, and that's a really good deal. And a lot of them are new releases. And it's time sensitive. You got two more days. And then I'll place the order with Prima, and their orders come in really fast because they're in California. Not like I have to wait for Dixie Belle because they're in Florida. Okay, half of that C just came up on my paper, so that's what you wanna watch for. I love all this farmhouse stuff when they stack up the animals, you know. Um, a couple of weeks ago when I was painting on glass, I did that with the cow and the sheep and the chicken. Stacked them all up on each other. It just, it just makes me smile. And I've done it on other pieces that I've had in the booth and they sell really fast. People still really like the farmhouse look. I was born in Wichita, Kansas, but for the most of the first five years of my life, I lived on the farm with my grandma and grandpa. And I always say, you can take the girl off the farm. You just can't take the farm out of the girl. I also say you can take the girl out of Kansas. You just can't take the Kansas out of the girl. <laughs> and if you're from Kansas, you know what I'm talking about. So far, so good, you guys. I just saw, it didn't lift, but I saw it. And when I get done with this, I'm going to um, take a finishing sander and I'll show you how to burnish it down. Anybody else have any comments or questions? I know um, my friend Pam on here, she did some really big ones big designs like this, and she put them on her windows in her home. 
She put some on some stools too that came out super cute. Trans transfers just really make it easy to be artistic and you're still being artistic even when you're using a transfer because it's how you apply the design because lots of times I cut them up to pieces. They're not even recognizable from the sheets that they came on. Like if you guys watched me do the Magnolia Jacobean cabinet or the sunflower chest, I cut those sunflowers into, I, I'm not kidding, there's probably 50, 70 pieces that I cut those sunflowers into. Stacy, yes, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna seal with satin and then I'll go over it with um, three to four coats of gator hide, sanding with steel wool in between. Um, because this is the table and this table will get high use. It will get food on it, it will have hot and cold drinks on it, it'll have drinks that are spilled on it, food that's spilled on it, and you need to protect the surface of this table really well. And so anytime anybody's doing a table, and I don't, Mary's on here. Mary helped her good friend do a beautiful dining room table, so she can tell you firsthand I don't know how many coats of gator hide she had on there when she was finished, but it was a lot. And doing a dining room table, and I think there were six or eight chairs, it was a big set. It was a lot of work, but it turned out really cool. Now, if I was super ambitious, and I'm not, because I have too many projects going, but I think this kind of a table would be super cute if you did a border check, just a black and white border check all around the edge. Don't you guys think that would be adorable? And I'm not kidding, I, I do have so many projects that, I have a chair that's almost done Half of it is done, and there's just a small portion of it that just needs um, a glaze put on it, just on the seat of it, and then that would be done, and I'd get that down in the booth. And then I have several pieces that are done for all intents and pur purposes, but they've got a touch up here and there, and they would be down in the booth. It's just like... I start, usually, most mornings I, I start at about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. And I'm usually out of gas by about five, in all honesty. And then I watch all my trashy TV shows and go to bed. Usually with a glass of wine or a whiskey on ice. You guys are learning all my secrets. Yep, Mary, I think that's what you did too. And I know it seemed like a lot and I think, if I recall correctly, that that piece was your friend's very first piece that she'd ever done. So what a huge project to start on for your very first piece. And it's so funny, because people do do that. I mean, at the Pinners Conference last year, and if you guys haven't signed up yet, you better do it. Um, all of my classes are free and, you, and I have it pinned at the top of my page, so you can click on that and go and sign up. Um, I'm teaching three classes, and they are all free, but they fill up really fast because they're free. I had 300 people in each of my classes last year. Um, 
But it was so funny because so many people came up to my booth last year and wanted to know about the paint and how you use it and all that kind of stuff because they wanted to paint their kitchen table set or their dining room set and they'd never painted anything before. And I'm like, good Lord, that's a big project to start on for your very first project. But there are people who do it and do a really great job. Now, like one of my really good friends, her name is Gemma, and she kind of did the same thing. She sent me a picture, she was brand new, she sent me a picture of what she wanted to paint and how she wanted it to look, and she wanted to know what paint and how to achieve that look. And my exact words were to her to find a smaller project and get used to using the paint before she did that project. I said, you need to learn to walk before you run. And so she said, okay, she got a smaller project. She did it. It was amazing. And then her second project was the one that she had talked to me about. And when I saw it in person, I was just in awe at her skill and talent level. And that was the second piece she'd ever done. So some people just can do it. Okay, you guys, we were successful in getting the top half on. How are we doing on time? We're a little short, getting short on time. So I wanna show you one more thing. So I sell these sanding pads and this is what they look like. And you use these to sand it's not really sanding, it's just smoothing out your coats, in between coats, um, especially with your chalk paint. But I like to cut them up in little squares like this and use them. And they work great for burnishing down your um, transfer. So I'm going to just show you this And we're getting close on time, so if some of you have to drop off, I'm going to continue matching this up. But this is what you do. And this also helps um, get rid of that halo that's on there. It helps camouflage it. So that's what you do with that once you get it down good. Okay, so now we're going to work on the bottom half of this cow. Don't you guys think this is going to be super cute with the black chairs and the black legs? Give me some hearts if you think this is cute. And like I said, I do have, I think I have one or two of these, the same transfer if you guys are interested in it. At one point, Prima discontinued it and then there was such a outpouring for it, they brought it back, which I was really glad because, like I said, I think it's just a really cute design. Now, when you're taking them apart like this, you wanna be sure that they don't ends don't touch each other or roll up on each other because they will stick to each other and that'll pull all of your transfer off. And don't lay them down until you have it perfectly matched. I think that's it. Okay, and I'm just taking the side of my stick here and just smoothing this all out so I don't get any air bubbles under here. And then I'm going to start over here, down here on this end. Thanks, Elaine. Hey, Melissa. 
Melissa. So Melissa, this is the table that was in my front room that I kept all the decoupage tissues on that my niece Heidi, who did all our make and takes last year, she gave me this table. This table was in her grandma and grandpa's home up in Prescott. And she asked me if I'd like it and I said, of course I would, because I love drop, drop leaf tables. And so, for those of you that haven't done a large transfer before, this is how you do it, especially if you've got one that you've got to match up two halves. And I'm just gonna quickly go over the whole thing. Oops, I went off, it's so transparent, I didn't even see it there. Got a little carried away. And if you came in late, this table is painted with three coats of saltwater silk paint. And the silk is awesome because it's three paints in one. And I did have to put three coats. I, I'm learning, and I've heard others say the same thing. Most of the colors in the silk line, you only need to use two coats, but if you're using the whites, it does take three coats. And it has the primer, it has the paint, and it has the top coat all in one jar. Saves you a lot of money and a lot of time. Um, just remember there are different rules for using silk paint than using um, chalk paint and you must follow the rules um, because silk paint um, you just have to you don't use water with it it has a longer drying time because it has that top coat built into it and because you can't use water, you can't blend. But for a project like this, saved me a lot of time, especially when you're painting chairs and legs. This saves me a lot of time. Chairs are very time consuming. Hi, Jan. You can always go back to the beginning. Um, I don't know, Susie. I've been looking for pumpkins, and I know there's pumpkins out there, but they're not the kind I like to do. So, and I haven't had time to go to the Goodwill to see if they have any pumpkins. Um, that used to be a good place, but last year I couldn't find a pumpkin one at the Goodwill. I think um, Studio MDAZ and um, Check Savvy Sisters, I think they're doing a lot of pumpkins right now. And if you guys missed it, I um, was telling everybody I've got a big sale going on right now and there's only two days left. And it's new releases from Prima and some of the favorites. And if you use the coupon, the coupon is HAPPY HOUR, all caps, one word. And it gives you 10% off of anything that's in the category for the Prima. I put it all in one category. It says Prima pre-sale and everything's listed in there. And there's some really, really beautiful transfers in there, you guys. Um, and like I said, they're smaller, geared more towards crafters. They're not big ones like this, but the designs are gorgeous. So I would encourage you to go look, you get 10% off, and it's only 10% off of 
the Prima pre-order. If you order anything else, paint, slick stick, anything else, that's just regular price. The coupon doesn't work for that. The pumpkin I did in class, the one that you did, Mary, I got those, those, if it's the one that you did, Mary, I got those at a combination of places. I got them at Joann's and I got them at Hobby Lobby. And I saw two of them at Hobby Lobby when I was there last week. That's all they had of the paper mache ones and that's the ones I like to do. I did find, you guys, today, I ordered it, it hasn't gotten here yet, but I did find the coolest galvanized Christmas tree on Michael's site, and it was on sale. It was still kind of expensive. I think it was still $18 on sale, and I think that was 50% off. But it's a really cool gal galvanized Christmas tree, and I loved how the branches were on it. And I'm going to do that for a project using the patina paints. And that'll be using the copper and the bronze patina paints. And I think it'll just be beautiful. And I ordered that today and I ordered some really cool boxes that I think will be fun projects. So, like I said, you want to go slow and easy and watch what you're doing because if it's, if it's lifting up any of your design, you just lay it back down and rub over it again. This isn't one of those things, especially when they're big like this, that you can just wham bam. When you cut them up like I did on the sunflowers and the magnolia, it can go faster, but then you still have to think about how you're gonna lay them out and design it and put it together. So that can be time consuming. And again, my website is listed at the top of this video, www.debrabucherdesigns.com and my shop at the Brass Armadillo in Phoenix. However, you guys, um, I'm on the fence about, I have transfers in the Brass Armadillo right now, um, but I'm on the fence about taking them out because I have so much theft, and what they do is they open up the transfers take the transfer out and then close it back up and set it back on the shelf. And I've caught it a couple of times myself, but they did it and I hadn't been back in and a customer bought a transfer and when she got home to use it, it was empty. And that really upset me. It's one thing when it affects me, but it's another thing when it affects my customers. So I'm on the fence about leaving them there some of the high dollar items like the gilding waxes and stuff, I just think that I may just have to take those kind of things out. And I have theft tags on everything. And I have four cameras up that record 24 seven. So, you know, if you want stencils and I take them out from there, you can always order them online 
and you can either pay the flat fee $10 shipping or um, you can pick them, you can always place an order for pickup and come here to pick it up. And the flat fee covers whatever you buy. It, you know, if you buy paint and transfers and sponges and stuff like that, it's just one flat fee regardless of what the weight is. And I send out usually same day next day, and I send it out priority. Okay, I got a whole section here that just lifted up and I wasn't paying any attention. I complain about this every single week, you guys. I have, I super cool my house. So my AC goes off at 11 o'clock. And by this time of day, it's warm in here. And doing this table, I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm a sweaty girl. Yeah, I still love that pumpkin. That's kind of a hard class to teach. Um, some people do really well with it, and you did really well with yours, and then some people just struggle with it. And when you have a large class, that one's kind of a tough one, and I've taught it for two years in a row, so I was trying to come up with something a little different. I'd still like to use those pumpkins, though. Just dropped a drop of sweat. I'm gonna get a paper towel, you guys. We're almost there. We're about an inch away from that center. Yeah, those are the best classes, Mary. I think that was the first class you took with me, right? I think you need to come up with another class too, Mary. Your friends were such a fun group. I enjoyed them so much. 
And in case you guys don't know, I do private classes. Mary did that with her friends. They all decided on a project. And I think she had eight, eight or nine gals. And we did a private class. It was super fun. And I'm happy to do that if you get six or more people together. It's matched up perfect. You would never even know where the seam was on this. So I'm just gonna rub it down with my fingers a little bit. And after you've rubbed it down with your fingers, then you take this little burnishing square and you go rub it all off. So did I miss any questions? Yeah, Joey, I enjoyed your class too. That was a really fun class. Joey lives up in Heber Overgard and she had um, her friends who were all elementary school teachers get together and we even got to use the classroom at the school. I'm gonna bring the camera back up here. Hang on. And you know, when you get teachers together, te teaching teachers, they were really good students. So, ta-da! Okay, I'm in both cameras. So I hope you guys can see the whole design. Well, you, you saw the whole design. Now you can see me. I'm a hot, sweaty mess, I'll tell you. So I think this is super cute. It looks like we got it centered well. And um, I think when the chairs are done in the black silk and the legs, it'll be really, really cute. Thanks, Goldie. Goldie was in one of my fun classes too. She took a decoupage class that was super fun. Um, okay, so does anybody have any questions? You guys hung in there for a while. We were on here, we went about 15 minutes long, I think. So that wasn't too bad. Okay, so I just wanna remind you, um, tomorrow is happy hour crafting at four o'clock. That's 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, I'm not sure what project we're doing tomorrow. I've like changed my mind about three times today. I kind of think I know, but I'll let you guys be surprised tomorrow. And um, if you are part of the uh, Savvy Sisters, I'll be on their page tomorrow at two o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And let's see. Oh yeah, so crafting tomorrow. And then don't forget about the Prima sale. Go take a look, see if there's anything that you just can't live without and use your coupon. It's happy hour, all caps, for anything that's in the Prima pre-sale category. If you have any questions, send me a message. Um, Goldie, let's see. Can you successfully put a transfer directly onto laminate without paint? Yes, you can. Just be sure that that laminate is really clean first, like really squeaky clean, that there's no oils or residues or anything. And then it would be the same process as putting it on paint. Just take your time and it'll do fine. You know, you can do it on glass. I've done it on the old windows, you know, with the frames going in between. And I did one that had flowers coming up. It was super cute. It was like looking out a window at a field full of flowers. Um, so, anybody else have any questions? 
All right, well, if you think somebody would enjoy this, please sprinkle it around. And if you enjoyed it, please give me some. <laughs> That's kind of pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> and I hope to see you guys all tomorrow. So you guys have a great evening. Good night.